G'day everybody, welcome to another Affinity Photo tutorial. This week I've got six different photographs that we're going to blend together. I'm going to start off with this picture of our abandoned room here. First thing I'll do is duplicate the layer with a command J and turn off the background layer. We don't need that on at the moment. While I've got this background layer highlighted, I'm going to come up here to my develop persona and I'm just going to turn up my clarity to about 60% and bring down my contrast to about minus 50 15 and hit develop. Now still on the background I'm going to add a curve so down here to my adjustments and down here to curves. I'm going to clip that curves just to this background layer and on my curves layer I'm just going to come down here to the blue channel just the blue channel I'm going to bring the blue up putting all the blues into the shadows and bring this one down, um, giving me that nice sort of colour here, sort of abandoned look that I'm looking for. So let's click off that. The other thing I'm going to do while I'm here, I'm going to duplicate this layer. And on this layer here, I'm going to come up here to filters, blur, and I'm going to click on average, average blur. And what that's done is all the colours in that picture is giving me an average colour. I'm going to use this later. So let's turn that off and drag it underneath the background layer that we're using here. The next thing I'm going to do is add my broken window. So I'm going to come over here to these pictures here. Already made a selection. I did use my flood selection tool with the tolerance on about 14%. So let's copy this over with a command C over to our picture here of our room and command V. And you can see that we've sort of missed a few spots. So let's Come back over to our flood selection tool and just click on these spots and hit delete. Let's get rid of them. All these little spots here, all the way around, you in here, you here. You can leave a few of these ones because they add a little bit to the effect. So let's make sure we go Command D or Escape to get rid of the marching ants. And let's come up here and click on our move tool. And let's just make this a little bit smaller and drag it over towards the window. A little bit smaller again. Now we're going to fit our broken window picture into our window frame here. So we're going to use our perspective tool down here on the toolbar. I'm just going to click on my perspective tool and the first point here, I'm just going to drag up into the corner. I'm going to drag this other one over to the other corner and then this one up to this corner and matching it into the corners there. So we've got our broken window. Let's just hit apply. And on our window layer, let's add an effects, a layer effect down here on FX. And let's click on inner shadow and bring that radius up a fair bit, maybe to about 40 and click off that. While we've got our window layer, let's duplicate that and grab our move tool and move this one down to the bottom here. And let's just flip that around so it looks a little bit different. So let's come up here to Arrange and let's go Flip Vertical. Let's click on our Perspective tool again and we'll just put that one into this window frame here just a little bit better down in the corners here. And hit Apply. And I'm just going to move this one a tiny little bit across just so they look a little bit different. So we've got our broken windows in place. Let's just highlight both of these window layers and command G and we'll call that window. So the next thing we're going to do is bring over our dust. So let's grab our dust layer, our dust one layer, command C, bring that over to our main picture and command V. Let's change the blend mode of our dust to screen and let's duplicate it. On the first one, bring it down to where our window is. Again, let's click on our perspective tool and let's bring this one in so it looks like that dust is sort of coming through or close to the window and hit apply. That looks pretty good. On our other dust, I'm going to drag that other dust over the whole photo and drop the opacity down to about 75%. On the first one, you can see we've got the lines here. So what I'm going to do is add a mask to the first dust layer. On our mask layer I'm going to grab my brush and I want a nice soft brush. Colour I want to be in black. Make my brush a little bit bigger. Got my flow at 25%, opacity at 100 and the hardness can be zero. And just on that line that you can see there I'm just going to blend that line into the other dust. 
just so we don't see that line coming through. So just blending it in. There we go, that looks pretty good. So let's now put these two layers together and Command G, and let's call that Dust 1. We're going to bring over our other dust layer now, which is Dust 2. Command C over to our main picture and Command V. We do need to change this one again to screen. And on this one, I'm going to come up here to my move tool, make the picture a little bit smaller so we can see that dust. I'm going to drag it all the way across my photo, but on this one, I want this dust to be on the ground. So I'm going to click on my perspective tool again, and I'm going to drag this one into the corners, each of the room here, just in the corners. This one I'm going to drag all the way out till I get it along the wall here and the same for this one let's get it along the wall might be able to drop that one a little bit and hit apply so now that's dust on the ground here so let's just have a look at that that looks pretty good we've got all our dust in place now let's just call that ground dust or floor dust Let's call it floor dust and hit enter. Okay, so that's the dust on the floor and the dust on the windows there. So we're now ready to bring over our model. So you can see my model here. I've already made a selection of my model using my selection brush tool. And we've got a selection all the way around. So I'm gonna hit delete just to get rid of the background. I'm also gonna hit command D to get rid of my marching ants. And while we're here, we're going to prepare our model for our room. So I'm going to come back to my selection brush tool. I'm going to zoom in quite a bit using my command plus. Just come down to where the model's face is here. And just use the bracket keys to make your brush bigger or smaller. And I just want to make a selection just around her face here underneath the hat. So I'm just going to make a selection underneath the hat and just this part of the face. Holding my option key down just to go under the chin there. We want a really nice smooth selection if we can get one. And around here and just under the chin. Let's try to smooth it out a little bit. And that looks pretty good. So let's just hit delete on our keyboard. So we've got rid of all of that face. And then command D to get rid of the marching ants. I'm going to use my erase brush tool, making that a little bit smaller with my left and right bracket keys. And I'm just going to get rid of these little bits that are left over here. Get rid of those little bits that are left. A little bit on her arm here. So I'm gonna make my brush quite small just to get into this little area here. Get rid of that, that looks pretty good at the moment. And I'm just going to get rid of a little bit of this hair that's sticking out here as well. That's okay, looking okay. Now let's grab our blur tool. Make sure that everything's on 100%, opacity and flow, and my brush a little bit smaller. And I'm just gonna go over the edge here. Just blur that a tiny little bit. Okay, I'm going to grab my ellipse tool, my circle here, and draw out a circle about that big. I'm going to grab my color picker here, and I'm going to pick the color of the model skin here, and activate that so my circle matches that color. Let's click on our move tool and move this circle over here and sort of stretch it out. And let's rotate it. Let's just fit it in to our model here, just on top. We don't want to see any of the background. Maneuver that in so it just covers all the edges of our model. That's looking okay. So before we do anything on our ellipse tool, let's right click and rasterize it and turn it into a pixel layer. And let's grab our blur tool with our opacity and flow at 100%. And let's just go around the edges here. Blur those edges in a little bit. Nice and easy around the edges there. That's looking okay. We're going to grab another circle now. We're going to make sure up here on our fill that our color is black. And we're going to draw out another circle. Let's click on our move tool and bring our circle over again and rotate it. And again, let's stretch it out to the edges. We can use our arrow keys to move it into place a little bit better. Just get that in place. Let's have a look. 
that's not looking too bad maybe it needs to go over this way a little bit more let's just click on all of these layers now and come up here to layer and merge visible just so we've got one layer with everything we don't have to mess around with all the layers it's command c and bring that over to our picture of our room here and command v we've got our model now in place let's make that smaller and let's place our model in our room here and i'm just going to place it behind this plank of wood here about that size is looking pretty good but on our model you can see the light is on this side so on our model layer i'm going to come up to arrange and flip horizontal and then move my model into the middle again just so i see that green line clicked in the middle I'm going to move my model under the dust one group so there's some dust at the front of the model I'm going to duplicate that dust layer and move one behind my model. So I've got dust in front and behind. The one in front, I'll drop to 50%. So I've got dust in front and behind my model. So now we need to blend our model a little bit better in with the background of the photo. And remember earlier how we took the background layer and we added a filter and we added the average blur. That's this layer here. So I'm gonna turn that on now. I'm going to drag that up to my model and just clip it to my model. And you can see that my model has now filled with a color, which is the average color of all the colors in the photo. But on that background, the blur background layer that we've got here, I'm going to come up here to my blend modes. I'm going to change my blend mode to color. And on the opacity, I'm going to drop it down to 50%. You have a look at that now. We've gone from here to here, blending that model a little bit better with the background. And we're going to use this again a little bit later. So we'll just leave that for now on our model. And we're going to bring the next picture in, which is going to be our tiger. And as you can see, I've used my selection brush tool and I've made a selection of the tiger as well, just to save a little bit of time. So again, I'm just going to hit delete, get rid of the background and then command D, get rid of those marching ants, just so I've got my tiger on the blank layer. I can now go command C and bring my tiger over to my main picture and command V. And just move the tiger down and make the tiger a little bit smaller and have the tiger all the way on top as well so let's move that into place and you can see on my tiger here that most of the light is on this side as well so i'm going to do the same and come up to arrange and flip horizontal so the light is on this side of my tiger that's coming through my window and we'll just need to get the size right so looking pretty good he's a fairly big tiger and we're going to do the same to match the color of the tiger again to the background. So we're going to duplicate that average blur layer that I've got on my model with a command J. And I'm going to drag that up to my tiger and I'm going to clip it. You can see that he's already changed. The opacity for this layer that we just copied is already at 50%. So we're going to leave it at that. I'm going to drag my tiger layer down here just under dust one with my model. So I've got the dust and that behind and in front of my tiger as well you can see a slight line on my tiger here and that is from the floor dust up here so i'm just going to add a mask to that floor dust come and grab my brush got my flow still at 25 percent and i'm just going to take that away from my tiger's face a little bit so i don't have that line that is looking a lot better so just that's just added a mask onto the floor dust there so now we've got our model and our tiger in place i'm going to come down here to the background layer of the room and over here to my clone brush tool i'm going to turn the flow back up to 100 and the opacity to 100 and i'm going to hold down my option and just click on these papers here make my brush a little bit bigger i'm just going to paint some of those papers over here near my tiger and also some of this sort of mess on the floor here. I'm going to paint a little bit of that in as well. And that's okay. So the reason I'm doing this, I'm going to hide a little bit of the tiger's tail here. So once I've got those papers just cloned in over here, click on my tiger and add a mask. Back on my brush tool, I've still got my soft brush and I'm still painting in black. 
and I'm just going to hide some of my tiger's tail like it's going in under those papers so that's not looking too bad so we now got all of our elements in place so a few other little things that we're going to do to make this photo a little bit better we're going to firstly click on our model layer and add a blank pixel layer and I'm going to call this one model light because we're going to add some lights so model light and hit enter going to change the blend mode of this empty layer to overlay going to grab my brush going to hit x on the keyboard to swap over to white going to drop my flow all the way down to about 10 percent the opacity can stay at 100 and the hardness is zero and just make my brush a little bit smaller and just on my model here i'm just going to add some more of those little highlights maybe some on our hat here just on that side where the light from the window is coming in. I'm going to do the same on my tiger. So just click on my tiger layer and add a new pixel layer. Change the blend mode to overlay. And we've still got our brush set. And on this layer here, I'm going to brighten up this part of my tiger. Because the light is coming through there. And I'm going to click over hitting X on my keyboard to black, make my brush a little bit bigger and I'm just going to darken this side of my tiger up where the light's not coming through. That's looking pretty good. So we've got our model light, let's call this one tiger light and hit enter. I'm going to add another pixel layer right above my tiger. I'm going to call this one tiger eyes hit enter that layer up here to my colors and i'm going to pick a really bright green color i'm going to change the blend mode of this to overlay as well still on a nice soft brush i'm going to zoom right in to the eyes on my tiger zooming right in Make my brush a lot smaller, about the size of the tiger's eyes, maybe a little bit smaller. I'm going to paint my green colour onto my tiger's eyes, both of the eyes here, making them nice and green. Command zero on my keyboard to make my picture go back to normal size, and I'm going to drop the opacity to 50%. The tiger's got nice green eyes. Make that picture a little bit smaller. So let's go now and add some of our window light. So right up top of the window layer here, I'm going to add another pixel layer. I'm going to change my brushes back to default. Still got my nice soft brush, but I'm going to change the color to this light in the window, sort of the yellowy light in the window, and activate that. This is where I'm going to use one of the brushes from uh, my good friend Resiny. I am Resiny. I will link his brushes below. He's just put out a brush pack um, and I'll put the link below for you to go and check those brushes out. And the first one I'm going to use in this composite is one of the light beam brushes down here. And I'm going to pick this one, 2000. And I'm going to turn it around using my arrow key so I'm going to turn it round just keep clicking my arrow key until I've turned it round and then I'm going to place it in the window where that window is coming through there and just click once going to do the same on the second window here and just right in the middle and just click once going to click on my move tool and then just drag those out a little bit maybe down a little bit so it's like that light is coming through the window and on my light beams i'll just bring the opacity down on those to about 75 percent at the moment that's looking pretty good and now we've got our light beams in place we can add a little bit of shadow so let's start with our tiger let's click on our tiger layer again and click on our new pixel layer and let's call this tiger shadow while we're here and we'll grab our brush again. We'll change our brushes back to the basic brushes. Nice, soft, basic brush. Going to drop my flow down a little bit more, down to about 15%. The opacity is 100 and hardness is zero. And this is just gonna be our shadow for our tiger. 
make sure our color is on black and we're just going to add a little bit of shadow for our tiger here on the ground here just peter it out a little bit and i'm going to add a little bit of shadow on the wall here at the height of the tiger as well we'll drop the opacity on this a little bit more in a minute but just that shadow maybe a tiny little bit around the front here let's drop the opacity on that to 50 percent let's do the same for our model another pixel layer on top of our model here let's call that model shadow and let's do the same so we've got our brush still all set and make our brush a little bit bigger and we'll just do some shadow at the back here for our model petering out a little bit and again at our model's head height let's put some down the wall and change that to 50 percent very very subtle so the next thing i'm going to add some text so i'm just going to click on my background layer here and come over here to my text so just click on my text i'm going to drag that text out and i'm just going to type out subscribe sub Subscribe. and I'm using this little dripping marker font I'll leave a link in the description below where you can get this marker font as well and on that I'm just going to make that a little bit smaller and turn that round a little bit and I'm going to position it like it's on the back wall here and I'm going to drop the opacity down to about oh, about 65 percent so now let's right click on that text layer and let's just rasterize it so we can have a pixel layer let's grab our smudge tool over here let's have our flow at 60 and let's bring our strength down to about 60 as well and let's just move some of that around like it's been just quickly painted on that back room there just smudging like it's dripped down a little bit more and I might even drop that opacity a tiny a little bit more down to about 40. So two more things before we finish. I'm going to come down here to my adjustments with the brightness and contrast right on top. I'm going to bring my brightness to about minus 30 and my contrast about minus 25. And then one more little thing on top, which is my last curves right on top. Flatten those blacks a little bit down in the middle like my s curve so there you go everybody that is my abandoned room tutorial for this week and if you head over to the buy me a coffee site you will see that i've included the lut for this room so you don't have to do all the coloring yourself all you have to do is load the lut grab it from buy me a coffee come down to your adjustments and click on lut and you can click on load lut Go to where you've saved the abandoned LUT that I've got on the Buy Me A Coffee site and you can just click on open and that's going to give you that color without you having to do all the color grading yourself. So let's have a look at that. That is before, that's after. So you can grab that from the Buy Me A Coffee site, which is going to be this one here, abandoned LUT. So you can come here, click on get this and you'll be able to download that LUT for this tutorial. Okay, well, I hope you have enjoyed the tutorial this week. If you have, please subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell so you know when I'm uploading my next video. And until next time, I'll say to you, stay well, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video.